Okay, welcome back to the Project Fast YouTube. Uh, so today we've got Kat Kepler and myself reacting to her London 2012 Olympic gold medal winning race. Uh, so unfortunately we can't include sort of the full race within uh, the video, uh, just due to some copyright restrictions. However, I can include some snippets of her rowing uh, a little bit later on when I go through to analyse her video. But if you just open the other tab, well, if you just click on the link either within this video or in the description below, and it will bring you to where we start to watch her race together. Uh, and then just mute that god awful commentary on the Olympics um, and just listen to yeah, what Kat's got to say. Really, really interesting analysis from Kat. And yeah, I hope you enjoy the video. So I think actually what I didn't expect on the start line was I was pretty calm. Because we'd done final trials at dawn eight, I was trying to think, it's final trials, it's final trials, you've done this before, you know the lake. Um, the one time I did get nervous was in the silence before they do the roll call, I could hear the crowds at the end, they were so loud. And that's when I thought, oh, I think the four's just won. And then I was like, oh, someone's gonna win. And I got off track a bit and I, I had to hear, be like, okay, focus in, first stroke, what's the first stroke? Um, here, I think my mind was just blank, just waiting. And then actually, I've only had this twice in this race and at J14 championships, <laughs> where um, the first few strokes just seemed to happen in slow motion. I think we practiced them so much, but it almost seemed like everything was happening really slow. Um, so we got out, I think we knew we had a good start for us, but we knew that we were never going to be leading off the start. Like the Greeks and the Chinese had an amazing start. So actually we were quite confident and comfortable with that. We didn't need to be ahead at that point because we planned that we wouldn't be really. Actually just watching this race as well, like I just loved, um, the Greek combination were just amazing to watch. I know that's not what I'm commenting <laughs> on, but like I loved watching them. Like they were just so graceful and synced up. So I think at this point, around about 250, 500 in, I was obviously doing the calls and I remember looking across and thinking like, Jesus, we're going really well here, even though we were down. Like, cause I knew when we dressed them before we'd been down by a lot more. Mm. So I was like, actually for us, this is really, really good. This is a good sign. So that boy does up quite a lot. And then, yeah, obviously by this point we were rating a lot higher than we had earlier in the season, which I think again, gave us something in our back pocket like the lead at races when we were around 32 ish I think probably here we were 34 to 36 um mid race pace so we had a lot of room to step up it wasn't yeah. like we'd gone to our peak rate earlier on mm. and then it's interesting watching as well because you've obviously got so many cyclists and those people running in the background <laughs> and it would have got louder and louder but actually at the time because you've had the heat and the semi to get used to the noise by the time you get to the final like I just remember we were so zoned in I literally don't even remember hearing the crowd it was just like follow Sophie do the calls like stay in the 100 meter block that we're in on the wrong boat I know <laughs> they do look good though <laughs> um I think what helped a lot with Dorney as well obviously we knew the we knew the lake really well so I remember we used the just coming now but you can't see it because it's the other side of the lake um like we use the gaps with the bridges rather than the actual um this distance is. boards a to know where we were but b to do our pushes off so at this point, I think it's going to show we've either just come through or we're coming through a okay. care. And I do remember we did a call then. Um, and we were like, right, let's go. Because we knew our mid-race pace was really, really fast. 
so that's why we weren't yeah we are just coming through a care so coming in and out of here we were like legs go and I literally just remember the boat be like woof and it felt so good like I got butterflies in my tummy because Sophie was just so determined and so physically strong like you could feel that in the boat um and I think as well obviously when you haven't been leading like the Greeks and the Chinese have been leading and then when you do a move and it really pays off like the momentum psychologically is on your side yeah and at this point we were still just really calling all the way through it was just technical calls process calls at no point were we calling anything to do with like we're winning or like <laughs> we're moving let's go like it was all our boat super focused and I think that's why it wasn't overwhelming at the start or in the race because it was just like we're just rowing we know how to row we rode the double a lot it's any other race and we just shut everything else out so obviously at this point it starts to get a lot louder <laughs> um and I think watching it now, like this, it's still quite close at this point, but I think by here, we felt the momentum on our side. Like we knew we were eking away a little bit. And I think also we both just felt really good in ourselves. You know, like when you get, sometimes you get to 7.5500 to go and you think, oh my God, I'm gonna die. <laughs> like <laughs> this, is, this is gonna go downhill. I didn't feel like that. And I think it's because, you do just have so much adrenaline and the crowds are so loud. And as well, like this is what you train for for years and years. Like this is the one race in four years. So you're not thinking about like, I'm dying. You're just thinking this is literally everything. This is it. I've got 500 meters and I'm done. Mm. Um, so here, here felt amazing but was starting to feel a bit less amazing because I think it was starting to sink in like oh god we actually might win and literally in my head I was just thinking do not catch a crab do not catch a crab <laughs> you will never like you'll never forgive yourself don't do that to Sophie so I was just thinking by this point coming into the last 250 I know I knew that we were both physically really strong and we could hold that but it was about not making any errors and I think it had like been spitting a little bit earlier on so the handles were a little bit wet or they'd been splashed so I was just thinking like hold on to your handle and I actually remember I changed the calls in this last bit and I was more just saying like calm relax calm <laughs> rather than like go 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 because you don't want to push it push it push it and then something goes wrong so I was literally like stay calm stay calm loose loose and I think at this point, I was just thinking, please let the line come. So then I know I haven't messed it up. <laughs> so even at this point, I think you're not really soaking it up and thinking, this feels amazing, we're going to win. Because I was just like, you can't, you can't think about that until you're over the line. And then when we crossed the line, I think we'd literally been so mentally good in this race at just focusing in on the process and ourselves that I was literally, I think, I thought that we'd won, but I was still a bit like looking around <laughs> like, but did we, <laughs> did we, <laughs> what the hell? Um, and I think to, to deal with it and to get the best out of ourselves, personally I at least and the reason why I said we won the Olympics was because I had just been like it's just like final trials it's just another race it's another race like when I was saying before like you want something so much you've got to loosen your grip off so I was like it's not important it's not it's just another race it's normal and then when you actually cross the line then you can let that go and then I was like oh, but it's not it's a really yeah, big yeah. race <laughs> it's a really big race this is awesome um and obviously the crowds are incredible because they've got like a grandstands either side. So it just echoed down. And I just like, yeah, we'd both worked really hard, but like Sophie had just slogged her guts out for years and was just such an amazing person to work with that I was so happy that she, she got that. 
yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, amazing. Okay, so I'm just going to do a quick sort of technical analysis of uh, cats. Cats actual rowing stroke. Um, what's really really good about it? Why they're going so fast? Uh, and what bits you might not replicate um, as a sort of more amateur rower. Um, so they've got quite big prominent curves to their spine, um, almost kind of actually opposite to each other. So Sophie's got quite a straight lower to middle, upper, uh, lower to middle back, and then quite a curved middle to upper back, whereas Kat is the opposite. She's got quite a curved lower to middle back and then nice straight upper, uh, middle to upper back. Um, so the key thing sort of being here is that even though it's curved, it's incredibly well braced and really, really strong. So there's no flex to that uh, spine as, as they take the strokes and they still manage to get their shoulders in front of the hips uh, nice and early on. Uh, and Sophie especially keeping their shoulders from the hips for a long time um, during the drive. Um, so that flexion is what tends to cause injuries. So even though you have curves to your spine, uh, which I think every row should have at some point in the stroke. Um, being incredibly strong, strong in your core and well braced uh, is what's really important to prevent any injuries. So what I think Kat could potentially do a little bit better um, is uh, just lead with those hips away on the drive. You can see she opens out her back pretty early on. Uh, and when she talks about her force curves, which is B in another video, um, she's got a very sort of high early sort of peak to her force curve. Um, and it would be interesting to see if she kept those shoulders front of the hips a bit longer and actually brought the power on a little bit more in the latter half of the stroke. Uh, if that just matched her and served up a little bit better in terms of how they were delivering that power through the stroke um, and potentially go even quicker. Um, but obviously Olympic champions um, in this race um, rowing incredibly well. Uh, it may well be that the fact that Kat had such high, such a high sort of uh, power at the front of the stroke, really picking that boat up, um, and then Sophie shoving it through at the end, it just actually matched them up um, in terms of how they were rowing. Um, another thing I really, really like is how well they're basically rowing with the boat. So you can see here, there's a really nice surge to the boat um, just before they pick it up. So they're really picking that boat up at the high point and how they're sort of doing this or how I'm sort of interpreting how they're doing this and how I, how I coach this with my own athletes and how I achieved that feeling of picking that boat up on the rise um, when I was rowing, I was how you delivered that power during the, during the stroke. So you have that quick connection, but you're not picking up everything. And then you're nice and patient through the middle of the stroke and then you shove those hips through nice and strongly so you're creating acceleration through the drive and then that boat actually keeps on accelerating through the recovery. So the boat is actually moving at its quickest point just before you put your blades back in the water and then you've got a nice quick catch uh, and you're preventing that boat slowing down too aggressively uh, before you pick that boat back up again. Uh, and once you sort of get that rhythm and feeling of it, you just really start to work with the boat uh, and everything just feels so much more efficient. Um, with how you're doing things. Um, so yeah, another, uh, another thing to sort of bear in mind is that these are the things that they're doing incredibly well and you can replicate, but in terms of actually replicating posture, um, it's definitely sort of a slippery slope to uh, actually make yourself quite uncomfortable in the boat. So I do believe like a bit of flexion to the spine at a point that's comfortable for you is still good, so long as you are getting those shoulders in front of the hips with a bit of hip rock, however, however you're kind of getting that. But trying to replicate posture exactly um, can be a, a really, really difficult thing to do, uh, something I wouldn't sort of advise doing. So yeah, if, you, if you're really enjoying this content, you know, comment, like, subscribe, all that sort of good stuff. Any sort of questions that you've got um, that are rowing or training related, um, you know, we'd love, love to take a look at and potentially answer in the future. Uh, and if you are looking to get better at rowing, uh, I have got spaces in my one-to-one -one online coaching. That can be on the indoor rower, um, sweep rowing, sculling, anything, um, or sort of any other sort of general training. 
Uh, and they've also got sort of preset programs. So if you're looking at getting a PB on your 2K, 5K, 30 minute rate 20, getting a bit stronger for rowing or, or getting a PB on your power clean, getting a bit more powerful. Uh, then I have got some sort of standardized programs which are incredibly good value for money uh, and are pretty incredible programs that are getting you um, into the best sort of shape possible. Um, so all those links are sort of in the description. Um, I also run a monthly uh, video call uh, with uh, a world-class athlete like Kat. Um, I just did that the other day um, where we go through uh, people's videos, people's questions, uh, give them some feedback about how they can improve their rowing. Um, and so yeah, it's completely free for the time being. Um, the link for that group is also in the description. Um, get involved in that. It's incredible value. And uh, yeah, look forward to seeing you there.